Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Business of Comics. This is episode five. I'm your host, Terry Jenkins, and I wanted to do this video. Um, I know last video we touched upon um, working with freelancers and kind of gave some tips of where to go. Um, this video is a little more, it's still an overview, but it's a little more in depth than the last video as far as where to find your artist, where to find help for your comic, and um, and essentially how much you should be paying um, your artist. Now, before we get into it, make sure you hit the bell to be notified of new videos, subscribe to the channel, make sure you like, share the video, all of that helps this channel grow. And we're going to get into it. So as always, this is more of a relax behind the scenes kind of as I build this platform um I'm gonna go back later and edit all this to make like a actual final video but for YouTube purposes and to help people who are still thinking about maybe doing their own comic book or just doing a, their own business in general um I felt like putting these out right away so with that being said let's jump into how much we should be paying our artists. Now, the information that I'm about to share might be a little outdated, but when I did my research to find current comic book rates for pencilers, inkers, and um, anybody else you may need, I didn't really find like a general consensus. And when you go to certain websites like Fiverr, Upwork, um, digital webbing, a lot of artists already have their rates. And when you go to propose your own rate, you're gonna get some feedback from artists saying that that's too low, that's not the industry norm. Now, again, I haven't been able to find like an industry norm, especially on the independent market, which um I will assume most of you are here to um to do. So um I'm gonna actually change my theme because it's not there we go. Let's do color and body. So um how much should you pay? So um, I am using a chart from, I wonder if I can find this. I guess I should do that, at least do that for this. How to self-publish your own comic book by Tony Caputo. And hopefully I am pronouncing his name right. So let's um, look at the book real quick. So that way you know. How to self publish your own. So I bought this way like back in 2001, 2002, when I was really trying to do everything on my own. And I, I felt overwhelmed. And look, it's right there. And um, but this is where like when I did my first contract is because I pulled it from this particular book. Um, I wonder if it's on Amazon. It's gonna be on Amazon. Because if it's on Amazon, I'm gonna give you guys my affiliate link. Or maybe I shouldn't have, maybe I shouldn't have said it out out loud. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, it doesn't look like it's on uh, Amazon. What's the surprising? Just, oh, no, there it goes. So yeah, so I got all my contracts and um, stuff like that from this particular book. Um, I feel like a lot of the information is still relevant to today, in my opinion. Oh, oh, really 
Sorry about that. All right, so um, so let's get into so as you can see, this was published in March of nineteen ninety seven. So it probably is definitely it's definitely outdated as far as the pay rates and page rates. But I feel like for you starting out, especially if you're doing Fiverr and possibly Upwork and you know you're on a budget, I feel like you can use this to kind of justify it. Um, obviously, page rates, I would imagine, have gone up. But I can't imagine that they have gone up to the point where newcomers can charge, can charge $40 if they're a new writer, you know? Um, even though I, I think that's what I'm charging, but I don't consider myself new. I get a whole doggone master's degree. So, <laughs> and I've written for some clients already. So um, let's get back into how much do you pay? So if you're looking for a plot writer, and they're a newcomer, you should be paying anywhere between five to fifteen dollars a season artist you should be paying 15 to 40 and for a professional anywhere from $40 and up for your plot writer. So this is somebody who you have an idea, but don't know, don't know necessarily how to tell the story. This is the person that will take your idea, do your whole plot for you um, and give it to you probably most likely in prose form. This is the way we all learn how to write stories in school. And then you might need a script writer. So a newcomer. So this is somebody who will take the prose form, put into a script so that the artists can draw from the script. Now, most artists, especially pencilers, can draw from a plot writer. We, in the industry, in the professional comic book industry, that's called the Marvel style, where the writer just writes the general plot and leaves it up to the artist to translate it into um, the comic book pages. So the plot style, the Marvel style, allows the artist to have more freedom. Whereas if you go with a script writer that is um, in the industry, it's called writing full script style. And that means the writer has pretty much full control of how each panel looks and how each page looks. So the artist is a little more restricted in that matter. I tend to be more of a full script writer myself. I do leave some wiggle room for my artists to have um, room for creativity, but there is a certain image nine times out of 10 in my own head. So it's all about whether you trust your artist or not. But for a screenwriter, script writer, a newcomer, you're pretty much charging the same much, five to fifteen dollars for a season writer, such as myself. You um you would want to charge anywhere between fifteen to forty dollars. And for professionals, 40 and up. Now you're looking for somebody who's going to do both. Somebody who's going to give you maybe like the, the plot version, but they also write the script. That's a complete writer. And that is me, everybody. Because I do, I do both. I prefer full scripts. 
we're going to ignore that. And so for full scripts, we're talking 10 to $30 for newcomers. We're talking anywhere between 35 and $60 per season. And for professionals, you're probably looking at $60 and up. Now, when it comes to artists, there's, um, you can have a layout artist. I'm not gonna put that one in here because I don't think, you, I think, especially if you go through Fiverr and um, Upwork and some of these other sites that group, I'm gonna share more in depth. You, your penciler is going to do the layouts themselves. So um, we're just gonna look at the penciler. So for those of you that don't know, a penciler is the person who draws the comic book, but they don't ink it. So it's very, very, it looks very rough in the beginning. So penciler um, sketches. pages. Let's do it that way. So, like, if we go to, I know what I'll do. When we go to Fiverr, so when we go to Fiverr, and, and you go to look. Now this is um, an actual artist that I use uh, Favor of Athena for a few pages. And these are examples of pencil pages. And this is an example of an ink page. So for your penciler, Newcomers, you're looking to pay them around 10 to $60 per page. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna start saying newbie. If they're seasoned, you're looking at 25, $50, $50 to $120, This is what I was actually paying my second artist, RE Dynamics. Um, I'm not gonna get into that. I, I was paying her $120 and then professional $100, and up. So um, obviously it's pricier than the writer because the artist is most likely who's gonna sell the book. Get used to it, that's what it is. Um, your inkers, you're looking at about 10 to $25 per page for newbies. Twenty-five to sixty dollars for somebody who's seasoned, and then for professionals, we're looking at sixty dollars and up per page. Your colors. Um, having a good color is important. Um, it's one of the things that probably gets overlooked by new comic book writers. So if you want the scene to be set at nighttime, the colors need to know that. If you want your specific colors on characters, the colors need to know that. So that all needs to go into the script or be described in the plot. Um, just, you know, 
don't think your colors is going to know. And that's why I like full script because it allows me to control that aspect of everything. For newbie colorists, you're looking at $5 to $20 per page. For, for season, we're looking at $25 to $60 per page. And professionals are $60 and up. And then last but not least, your letter comes in last, or at least in my process, they come in last. And in the industry, usually they come in last. Um, you want a letter that's going to be able to guide a reader with the rare balloons and the captions. Um, the letter shouldn't be, you know, they shouldn't try, just like the colors, they shouldn't try to take over the, the work by being excessive with their designs. Ooh. And um, yeah, so a good, a good colorist and a good letterer, you know, they're good because their work doesn't distract from the art or the story. And um, so our beginning, our newbies who are letterers, they're looking at around five to $10 per page. Our season letters are roughly around 10 to $15 per page. And professionals are most likely charging $15 and up. All right, so that's how much you should be, you should expect to pay your, your freelancers. Again, this is from 1997. So I'm sure the rates have gone up. Um, for each of these categories, I would probably say maybe five, $10 um, more now. Um, if you do find an industry, industry standard like again i found websites that reported what um writers inkers and colors are making that marvel at dc uh, but again i wasn't able to find uh actual industry specific standard um especially when it like i said earlier especially when it comes to the independent comic book scene um i really think it's about who if you can find somebody at conventions that you guys come up with your own scale, obviously that's cool. Um, when you go on Upwork, most artists already have their um, page rates. Writers have their own page rates. Same thing on Fiverr. So it's all about um, creating your own posts and saying what you need and just kind of like ignoring anybody that comes along and tells you um, that you are undercharging. Because even though you may be undercharging or not, you know, um, in some cases you may be overcharging, you really don't know, right? But if you are undercharging, but that's all you can afford, I, in my in my opinion, if I see your post and I know that I charge forty dollars per page to write a script, and you need somebody for twenty dollars nine times out of ten i am passing your post only because i feel like i am worth the forty dollars but i'm not going to respond i'm just not going to respond um i don't understand why people feel the need to respond to posts to tell that person that they're other charging i feel like as a business owner or even as somebody who's just running their own comic book you know your budget stick with your budget and if an artist or writer decides to take it on 
they know, you know, they know their worth. Um, there's been, there's been two times where I actually did do a comic book script for less than what I charge for my page rate. On, not because I need the money, uh, but you know, obviously I wanted the money, but not because I needed it, because I was actually interested. Well, all right, I'm lying. I was interested, like really, really interested in one of the projects. And I only did the other one to kind of help build my portfolio. So people will take um, a lesser page rate for various reasons. A lot of people look down upon that, especially those who are in the professional tier, because they feel like it messes up the, you know, the, the industry community um, as far as page rates, because if everybody starts charging lower page rates and those people get more work, it takes away from the professionals, takes away from the season. It becomes one of those things where, um, value starts to become underappreciated. So bottom line is I'm saying you do what you need to do to get your comic book done. But if you really can pay somebody, like if you get a professional who's willing to work on your book, you really should try to pay them their page rate. Um, right now, you know, my business is still, still new. So, you know, um, I would love to pay my creative team more. Um, like, I, I feel like I'm paying my letter what she, you know, what she, um, well, I'll put it this way. My creative team now, I'm paying them what they, um, what they wanted. So, again, it's up to you. Uh, you know your budget. But at the same time, I, I do agree. Don't be cheap. If, um, you know, just don't be cheap. Please pay everybody what they're worth if you can afford to. But if you really are in that part of your business where you can't, then somebody somewhere is going to um, pick up the job. Now, that brings us back to value and quality. Quality might not be where you want it to be. Um, when I saw your favorite Athena, I, I, I'm not going to say names, but I was happy with most of my artists, but I am really happy with my new artists. Um, I feel like my new artist has the style that I'm looking for. He's, um, I can tell who my characters are and not to say that the previous artists didn't do those things. I just feel like my new artist does it better. And so I'm really excited about that. And that's how you should be when it comes to your comic book. Um, I don't feel like I'm just now putting a book together. I feel like I'm really, really excited about putting Favorite Athena out. Because I'm like, oh, my new artist, he's going to, you know, and he's going to be our artist for all the issue too. No more um, switching artists during the book. So that was my little tidbit. Let's get back into where can you find help, right? So one of the first places that you can look at is Glasshouse Graphics, which I have up here. And so when you come to Glasshouse Graphics, um, they specialize in animation and comic art. You will wanna go to talent. And you have your choice of animation, colorists, digital artists, graphic designers, inkers, letters, manga artists, painters, pencilers, sculptors, web designers, and writers. So like we go to writers and let's look at Bobby Nash. So these are Bobby Nash's samples. A little bit about him, his credits, and an interview. And I believe, 
and it also tells you who they're represented by. If you go to letters, should be the same thing. So you would reach out to whoever represents them. And tell them um, the artist and then they will get back to you with what the page rate will be. You can also, <laughs> I never know. I never noticed that they had this on here. I don't, I don't use Glasshouse. I use. I was using Fiverr, and for my new artists, I I am using Upwork. But um, here you can tell them the um, what kind of project you're working on. Obviously, a comic book. Your description of the project. Your budget. Any questions that you may have. So that's cool. Let's see what else. Look at that. You can go to custom comments. I'm wondering what that is. So that's cool. Um, so yeah, so you get, you have glass house graphics. That is not their link. Um so now this is um, a talent agency that has been around for obviously since 1997 at the very least, right? Um, again, I haven't used them personally, but something that you may want to look into. And then another site that I was on when I was beginning my journey is digitalwebby.com. So this is another, um, it used to be really popular. I don't think it's as popular, especially when I go and I look at job postings. It doesn't look like to me people are active on here anymore. But you can go on here, you can tell them what kind of jobs you're looking for, or you can apply to jobs yourself. Um, again, I haven't, I got, um, when I was a newbie as a screenwriter, I got um, tore, tore up because I didn't know how to write a script. Um, I, I, was, I mean, I wrote my script using um, Peter Davis' book, but I didn't understand formatting all that well. And I got eaten up and I felt like, all right, I'll come back when I become a stronger writer. Um, but you know, now I'm a stronger writer, but it looks like they're not doing well, in my opinion. Now, again, I'm not, you know, again, I don't sit here and I don't study and analyze. I'm just telling you my first take. But again, if you're looking, it wouldn't hurt to try digital webbing. Um, but like I said, I, I know it, it was pretty popular, I, I would say in the mid 2000s. So we have digital webbing. Now again, um, fiber, oh, fiber, 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 <laughs> fiber, I, 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 I can't lie, Fiverr was good to me. Um, once I got the idea in my head that, hey, I just got to pay somebody, you know, I just got to do my whole book in, you know, in chunks over the year. Fiverr has been really good. I've been able to find artists for the budget that I have. So I'm not necessarily undercharging. I'm, you know, I'm paying, you know, I actually paid, my artists, what they were looking, you know, what they were charging, um, especially my first artist, because my first artist and my third artist were all from Fiverr. And, um, you know, there was no real negotiations. It, you know, I, I paid them their page rate that they were asking for. Um, so here you would want to go to buying and then you type what you're looking for. So like if you're looking for a comic book penciler, you type comic book penciler. And again, the cool, the cool thing about Fiverr 
is that they have a budget cone here where you can sort um, each freelancer and you can set like if your budget is $40 per page, you can apply that filter and then you'll get everybody that does pencils. Same thing goes for inkers, letterers. Um, my letterers from Fiverr, and I, you know, I pay her her page rate, which is five dollars per page. Um, you know, she's under. I feel like she's under <laughs> charging herself, but she's probably getting a lot of business. So she's one of those people where a lot of people will probably look in on her about, oh, you're hurting business, but you know, she's making money. At the end of the day, it's a capitalism society, and even if you're not. Everybody needs money, right? So I guess that's where I kind of stand. So long as she's not doing anything illegal. So we have um, Fiverr. And then we have Upwork, which I still can't say much about, um, as you can see here, these are some of the people that are like the top um, skilled in cartoons and comics. Um, Upwork also makes it, it's kind of like Fiverr too, where a lot of, um, it comes like with contracts themselves. Now I'm still gonna have my artists do like a contract before we really get started. so yeah um but i i think it's uh it's better especially so fiverr has a lot of international freelancers so i feel like in communication a lot of things get lost um i feel like with upward you, you find more english speaking freelancers um and communication is key for making your comic book. So I'm not saying not to use Fiverr again. If, if not for Fiverr, I wouldn't be where I am today. Um, and I'm on Fiverr. So, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm definitely not saying don't go to Fiverr. Um, you're going to find a lot of people that tell you not to go to Fiverr. But I, again, if you're on a budget and you're just trying to get your name out there, and you're trying to build your audience, I think Fiverr is probably the best way to go. I think Upwork is probably a close second, but you're gonna get more people that um, push back against your own budget. Um, I, I got it recently for favorable thing. I have three people that are like, hey, you're undercharging. And I'm like, hey, you didn't have to respond to the post. <laughs> so, and never try to get free work. Let me put that out there too, because you will get eaten up alive and it's just not fair. Now, if you're going to do, if you're going to chart, if you want it to be done for free, you got to give the artist something. Like you got to give them co ownership of comic book browsers. But if I know a lot of us don't want to do that, right? So pay, pay, pay your artists and pay them what they're worth, pay your writer what they're worth. But again, if you're on a budget, do that. But do everything in your power to make sure you pay them what they're worth um, when you get the chance. A bonus at the end. You know what I mean? Let, let's, let's help each other out. Now I'm going to give you one more. And then we're going to um, call it a night. Um, this is Cartoonist for Hire. And it's just like Glass House. Um, you can even do t-shirts, designs, logo, clip art, um, I know girls, uh, <laughs> caricature, caricatures, uh, political comic strips, oh, comic strips, um, so yeah, so that's cartoonists for hire. So 
these are the places that you can go to find help. Let me fix that real quick. All right. So I will end it there. So in closing, I'm just I'm joking. You guys, you guys get it right. I know. I know you do. All right. So please, 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 you're already on my YouTube channel, most likely is where you're watching this. But please make sure you stop by and visit Terrio Jenkins llc.com which will give you the link to the favor of athena webcomic it's free but there's also a link to our patreon which i'm still going to share here in case you just want to go there it's patreon.com terry jenkins llc and um again i'm not going to put the web comment on there because all you have to do is go to terry jenkins llc Dot com. I feel like it's easier. You go there and just click the link for the for the web company. It takes you to the web team. Uh, let's see what else. What else? What else? Any other tidbits that I can share? Um, hey, you are the creator. You are the writer of your comic book. You are the CEO. If you're doing this um, to start up your own business, you are the CEO of your comic book publishing company end of the day have fun with it it's supposed to be fun if you're opening up a business like let's say you're not even doing comic books if you're doing your own business um it's supposed to be fun i think um some books that will help with that um that have that has helped me are basically any book by Damon John, so like The Power of Broke um, is one of the books that really um, inspired me to like become more entrepreneurial um, instead of being just a freelancer. Yes, there is a difference. Um, a freelancer, you're, you're, you know, you have a job, but you're the one doing the job. You know what I mean? Like, and I think the power of broke teaches you to become, you know, to open up your own business and have a system in place. And that's what I have now. Um, it's very rewarding. But so, so was being a freelancer because I, you know, I did a few comic book scripts before I opened up my, my own publishing company. Uh, you, you are the manager, you are the leader. Um, you got to communicate. Um, it's another tidbit I would add. You have to communicate and you have to try to inspire and get people behind you. Now, I, I don't think I was able to make that connection with some of my artists. Um, you know, they all say that, you know, life got in the way. I totally understand that. But, you know, at the same token, it's a business. We got to do what we got to do to get our product done and out there. So um, I wish everybody good luck. Um, good blessings. I hope you guys all succeed. I hope this video help um, kind of help you get more acclimated to how much you should be paying, how much a whole book is. Like I said, I, I decided last year that I really wanted to make a comic book. And if that meant doing just two pages a month and waiting three years for the whole graphic novel to be done, that's what we're going to do. And I've seen it work um, for other artists. So, you know, or other comic book creators. So that that's my business model. Your business model might be like Marvel and DC where you're kicking out 22 to 30 pages, comic book issues a month. God bless you, you must have money. But, you know, so yeah, I, I hope this really helped um please be sure to hit the subscribe button 
hit the bell to be notified of new videos, like the video, share the video. And until next time, I'll see you guys for episode six. Good night.